Good evening. Here we have one of the development boards of the ESP32 microcontroller. Here it is blinking its GPIO5 pin and this relay and this solenoid valve every two seconds. And now we want to start programming these microcontrollers with our ordinary computers. We search for ESP32 Arduino IDE and we click this GitHub link that the manufacturer Espressive has made for us. Scroll down to find these using Arduino IDE instructions for the operating system that you have at your computer. My computer here has Windows and I am advised to click this link. If you have the latest Arduino IDE version, you may skip this step number one. But I see here that a newer version of this tool has been published during these days that I was making this video. So I conveniently got an opportunity to show you how to update an Arduino IDE to a newer one. The process is practically the same, no matter if you are updating this program or if you are installing it for the very first time. We just click this same link, download and run the installer program. It will ask for my permission first to get rid of the old Arduino IDE that I have here. That can be safely done because I have always saved my own programs into their default folder. And this newest version of the Arduino IDE is then installed by using everywhere the default settings. And as you see here, the version number is now changed to the newest one. Step number two is to install a tool that is called Python. It is important to use the version that begins with the numbers 2.7. Don't try those some versions that begin with the number 3 because they won't work here. I can see from this computer settings window that my computer's microprocessor can handle 64-bit computing and I seem to be lucky not to have any Itanium processor here. So I choose this Windows installer. And while installing, most of us need to click here to enable this last at Python EXE to path option. Step number three is to install another tool that is called Git. That is a program that makes it easy for us to install ESP32 board definitions to our Arduino IDE. This web page seems to notice that I am not using any tablet computer and that my this laptop computer handles 64-bit computing. So I just run the installation program that is recommended for me and I choose all the default settings here as well. We start the step number four by clicking this magnifying glass icon at our computer's desktop. We search for a newly installed git bash program, right click it, pay attention to choose to run it as an administrator. Copy these two lines of text into the clipboard, paste those lines to the git bash window, execute them by pressing the enter key, and finally we close the git bash program. In some YouTube videos they had to enter these lines one by one, but for my two different Windows computers it was possible to copy and paste them as a one whole thing. Step number five is to open the git bash program again, but this time we open it as a normal user without any right click. We copy these five lines of text into the clipboard, 
paste those lines into the git bash window, execute those five lines by pressing the enter key, and from this moment on we may now completely forget the git tool. Step number six is to take your ESP32 board and connect it to your computer with a USB cable. This particular FTDI chip should be supported by Windows 10. In other words, as my computer is connected to the internet, Windows 10 should automatically launch this program, connect to the Windows Update website, search for a proper driver and then install it to my computer. It is known to take a while, and I had plenty of time to check here the status of that process by clicking on the magnifying glass icon, by searching and choosing the device manager, and then by choosing this row of ports. Perhaps the driver would have been found by itself after a while, but I was here impatient, and I right-clicked the USB port that had the yellow exclamation mark and chose to update driver software. And by that way I did start the search process manually. And finally we see that our computer has now found the FTDI chip at one of its USB ports. Steps number 7, 8 and 9 are familiar to most of us. We are allowed now to start the Arduino IDE. We choose tools, boards and choose among the new ESP32 boards the one that seems to suit best for our particular board. We select the newly found COM board that our ESP32 board is attached to. Then we choose for instance file, examples, basics, blink, and tell to that fundamental example program the number of the digital pin that is at this particular port controlling the onboard LED. From the home page of this board I learned that here the LED is at the pin number 5. And as the final step number 10, we click the green arrow to compile and to upload our new program. Pay attention to that here we may need to hold the boot button during the whole uploading process. And after that we may have to shortly press the reset button to make our new program start running. And we see that the LED blinks now quicker than earlier, and we are now convinced that there is our very own program running at this ESP32 microcontroller. And it is good practice to save to the computer those programs that happen to work. I made this video at December 2016, and after a few months the installation process that we saw today should become even easier. But don't wait that long. Start doing your own experiments and your own projects and please share your experiences with us. And do get acquainted with the Bluetooth functionality that these microcontrollers have. I add into the description of this video some links where the Bluetooth functionality is handled and given to our disposal. Goodbye.